Hey folks, welcome back to the channel again, nice to see you. Um, today's video I want to give a bit of an update on the discus tank. So this is my big discus display tank in my living room here. Um, recently you'll have heard me talking about some problems I had with one of the fish, I think it was this one here. And talk a little bit about some of the, the tougher stuff in this side of the hobby, the dealing with sick fish, the trying to medicate or diagnose fish, treat them, seeking the right advice. Um, all that sort of thing and ultimately losing fish so I have lost some fish recently if you've been following the channel you know I've been having a little bit of trouble with this tank and with a couple of the fish I have lost three fish and, and what I'll call this bout of illness I think it's cleared up now I think I've got on top of it um, but I just want to talk a little bit about it and see if maybe it can help someone else avoid these problems in the start so let me take you through the story and we'll see if it rings any bells for anyone and hopefully it can make you avoid the same mistakes or avoid the whole situation in the first place. So you can see all the fish there. That's that's what healthy fish should look like. They look, they're quite tall. They don't have clamped fins. So these, these fins would be down against their body if they had clamped fins. They're not dark and they almost go black sometimes with stress and illness. And they're interested in me so they're not hiding away anywhere. They're out in the tank, but you can see this fish on the left here. He's the one that was causing me the worries. Now, he doesn't look great here. Um, this is him obviously in recovery, if hopefully he is in recovery. He still looks still looks way worse than the fish that we actually lost. Um, but that's an example of a very thin fish. So if you see this fish, for example, nice and round, nice and plump. Um, can't actually see as well, let's go into this one. If you see the forehead here, it's not too thin. It's quite wide, whereas if we look at the one that was sick, let's come around the side. It's quite a thin forehead and a bit pinched above the eyes. So if that was the first time I was noticing that being in this condition, then I'm probably too late. If I I'm being completely honest. But what happened was this fish here, he started to exhibit some of these signs, not quite as exaggerated as this, um, which is the kind of warning signs when you see a fish losing condition. So you see the fins are a bit ragged as well. Fins are a bit ragged. It's looking very, very thin now, but it wasn't quite as bad before. But when you see a fish starting to lose condition, that's when you know something's wrong. Now, depending on your point of view, um, you might have your own way of diagnosing things, but usually I'll ask myself some questions. So is the fish still eating would be one of them. Uh, and these fish were, they were all still eating. So if they're eating, you're generally in with a chance because once they've stopped eating, that's certainly in discus, that's when you can cause yourself the most amount of problems and stress. Did all the normal stuff as you would expect, so started up in the water changes. Generally this tank gets two changes a week, two quite large changes, probably about 30% if not 40. So I upped that to 50 and uh, doubled the amount I was doing a week. So I made sure I did a minimum of two a week. Hello. Water changes, especially with discus, they seem to be the first go-to thing anyone will ever tell you if you ask for advice. Um, do more water changes. It does help in the majority of cases, but alas, nothing here. So normally if they're eating, um, your next question might be something along the lines of, well, have you added anything new recently? Have you added any new discus, any new other fish? Have you made any other changes to the tank? Any changes in filtration, any overly exuberant cleaning, all that kind of stuff. And I could fairly confidently answer no, so I had added a, a bunch of cardinals um, somewhere in that period, but the problems when I thought about it had started a long time before that. So you've got a fish that is still eating and losing weight. Nine times out of 10, the first thought you're gonna to go to is some kind of worms. So we started some treatment for worms. Um, we've, my favorite treatment is a, a brand called Kusuri. Um, it's a wormer, it treats gill flukes, it treats various types of things. Um, but it, it has worked for me in the past. And um, what you tend to do is you treat the whole tank because if one fish has got worms, generally all the fish have got worms. So we treated the whole tank. 
and you usually go for a few treatments. Treat, break, treat, break, water changes in between, all that type of stuff. And what the indelicate part of this is you're monitoring their poop. Um, and I couldn't see any poop that was uh, worrying to me. So you'll either see white poop is what you're looking for, um, but if it's possibly if it's stringy poop or it might be segmented poop. And if it's segmented poop, that might be the worms coming out. If it's stringy poop, that might indicate some other kind of um, issue going on down there. But generally, the poops were quite healthy, the ones that I could see. I couldn't see any of the fish that I was worried about were actually pooping, or if they were, the filtration might have been taken away before I got to examine any of it. And like I say, you want to have a look at that because it helps you diagnose what's going on. So that didn't do anything. The fish continued to lose weight. And that's part of the problem here. When you've got these kinds of problems where it's a fish that's slowly losing weight over time, if, they, if you fix the problem, they're going to slowly put that weight back on over time and it's really hard to tell that sometimes. So you have to give a bit of time and you don't want to go in all guns blazing and throw medication after medication at it because that's just going to give you the same amount of problems and stress the fish out and possibly put them at more risk. So given time in between treatments, didn't think anything was working so started to think about other more specific treatments for internal parasites or any of the other discus diseases and so much like everyone else I kind of result to research on the internet looking up some experts and uh, using previous experience it is difficult to use the internet as a resource certainly Facebook groups and things like that because I've I see it all the time, people saying, this has happened, and you get maybe 10% of the information out of what has actually happened, and then someone will jump in with some advice, and you, they can't possibly give that advice uh, without knowing the rest of the story, so often you'll get bad advice on the internet, so check it with, I like to use one reliable source, or ask the question in several places to see if you get a consistent answer, so sometimes that can, that can help too. Um, but the mistake I made was not going to one of my discus expert friends straight away, uh, thinking that I knew better, Ooh, big head, and trying to solve all the problems myself. Um, and I think that's possibly why I lost the three fish that I lost. Um, because over the time, treating for the worms, not seeing any great benefit, um, they, they didn't have really clamped fins or anything like that, but they were a little bit dark, or darker than I would normally expect. Um, but like I say, they were all eating, so I was trying to give them some medicated food. And then I was trying various other treatments for internal parasites, um, hoping that I could catch something. And I think something along that journey had actually worked, but I don't know what it was. Um, so the moral of this story is that I can't tell you how to fix your discus if it's sick, um, because I don't know how I fixed my discus, if indeed I have actually fixed them. But they all look healthy now, so I'm, I'm fairly confident that they are fixed. But it was the time in between all these treatments, because like I say, you can't bombard them with chemicals and medicines, um, but until you hit on the right thing that is actually fixing what the actual problem is, um, it's just not gonna make a big enough difference. So I was leaving the, the week or the two week in between each of the, the treatments or the repeat treatments. And then uh, in the last, in about a two week period, three fish, I just lost three fish. Um, water parameters were fine, um, I think it was just the stress of trying to treat them and whatever the parasite was combined, they finished them off, um, they, they went within three or four days of each other, um, well two of them went within three or four days of each other, another one lasted another week or so after that and went and it's been another couple of weeks since then and I've not had any more losses and the one that did look the sickest is still with us and I think fighting back but like I say, it's just one of those really frustrating times because the, you can't, you just can't tell. Now, what I'll say is I just can't tell and the normal person just can't tell. Someone with hundreds of years of experience and thousands of discus that have been kept over the years, they might be able to do a lot better, which is why I implore you um, to consult your breeder or your supplier because they know best usually. And that's where I made my fatal mistake by thinking I knew best and not doing it. So I'm sure if I'd got to the point of explaining to them exactly what was going on, we might have been able to drill into it a little faster. Skip some of the treatments that weren't doing anything and got straight to the, the crux of it. Because okay. I think it was an internal parasite, possibly combined with worms. Um, so that's another thing I've been thinking about recently is normally I would say never 
and proactively treat for worms. I've always been an advocate of only treating a sickness when it actually exists. But worms is one of those things that by the time you notice it, it's really hard to get back from. So I think I'm changing my mind now and I, I think I do want to proactively treat for worms. And when I say that, all you're doing is you're dosing the water once maybe every six months or how often you, you find uh, necessary. You treat the tank uh, for worms. You treat it, you give it a few days, you treat it again, uh, depending on the brand. Some of them say a couple of weeks, some of them say a few days. And that will generally clear out any worms because they can be doing a lot of damage before you or I can tell that there's something up with that fish. Um, so I think I'm going to switch my stance to that. Um, but other than that, it's left me with a lot fewer fish. I've now only got five fish. Um, so some have been given away. I've just lost three that have been uh, killed by my own negligence and stupidity. So I need to get back up there. That's me. I've caught you all up now in the tank. Uh, at the moment, we have all the six remaining discus. We've got a bunch of stairby Corydora, which is actually doing really well. I think I saw eggs on the glass yesterday as well from the Corys. Um, but something ate them, so I'm not sure about that. So we might have another little breeding project going on. I've got the big fat cardinals that I got recently. They've all been added in and they're doing really well in there. It's just the the scape isn't doing well. It hasn't recovered from that period where my light stuck on for a while. So the algae's got a bit out of control. But I think it's time for a rescape of this tank as well. So I'm not sure what look I want to go for. Um, possibly like a hardscape with a few plants or just go all out planted. I'm not entirely sure. Hopefully that's given you a little bit of a, an insight into where we're up to with this tank. Hopefully it's some use to you if you're going through something similar, or at least giving you the confidence to go out there and research these answers on yourself rather than jumping on the first answer someone gives you. Um, so my big tips are always consult your breeder or consult your supplier. And now it's going to be add in proactive warmings as well. If you've got any tips, questions, all that kind of stuff, leave me a comment down below and I'll catch up with you next time, hopefully with a bit of a, a more cheery perspective on the fish keeping hobby. But for now, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for joining me. Remember to click that subscribe button, click that bell, all that good stuff. Share the video far and wide. Hopefully we'll get a few more subscribers in that can join us and I'll catch you next time. See you later.